everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tor, um, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, I sort of wanted to go over the five luxury items that I've sold and why. I have gone through quite a few luxury purchases in my short time here so far, and some that I have regretted and sold, and then others that I have loved and kept. So in today's video, I have five items specifically that I have sold recently and I just sort of wanted to go through them. So without further ado, let's get started. The first item that I wanted to talk about are the Balenciaga Triple S trainers that I purchased um, in 2018, I believe. They are the white ones. So I purchased these when I was working at Nordstrom. Um, it was just after I got back from Mexico with my boyfriend and I wanted to have a cool shoe to wear. Honestly, if I'm being really honest, it was to wear to the airport. I wanted a cool shoe to wear to the airport when I was going to New Zealand. So I was at Nordstrom, I was walking with my manager. We were like, what do we have? And at the time, the Balenciaga Triple S trainers were really popping off. They were impossible to find in any sort of size. So we came across the white ones. We had just gotten a shipment in and I was like, oh my God, like everyone has these shoes. These shoes are really cool. These shoes are really unique. I don't have anything like them. And they're in my size. Actually, part of the reason why I sold them was because they weren't in my size. They were a size too big. So um, usually I'm a size 39 and I am like a very true size 39. But these ones, they didn't have 39. They only had a size 40 and I was like, okay. Like they feel sort of fine. They're a little bit loose, but like if I tie them up tightly, they'll be okay. I got them in a size 40. I wore them on that trip a lot, actually. I was feeling my oats. I was feeling so fly. I was feeling so fresh, especially in New Zealand. There's not like a lot of designers. So like when you come in with something that's like that girl shoe, you're like, I'm that bitch. I got these shoes. I love them to bits. I wore them a little bit afterwards as well, but then Honestly, I realized I only bought these shoes because everybody else liked these shoes and I was like I don't even like these shoes and they're kind of uncomfortable They're ginormous and they're heavy and I am like a fairly small person These shoes were like this big. They made my foot look ginormous. Honestly, they were like really unflattering They made me look tiny. They made me look like a hobbit and I was not into it. They were super cool though around last year I had stopped wearing them because I wore them to work a few times. They were really cool. Everybody loved them. I sold a pair because I was wearing them and like, I was like, where do you get those shoes? And I was like, let me show you. They were like paying for themselves, I guess, like a little bit. And I just realized that I didn't even like really like them, but they were super cool. In their sort of height, I was like, okay, let me just sell them. So one of my friends who I was working with, he was doing um, luxury resale. So I sort of just gave them to him and he sold them for me. So I made like a pretty decent return. I didn't lose that much money on them, to be honest. So I don't regret them in that sense. But now, oh my God, I'm so happy I sold them when I did because now they're like basic now and like over. Like nobody wants to buy them anymore because like they already had their moment. Their, their moment came, their moment left. Like it's over for them. So I definitely wouldn't recommend buying them now. But part of me wishes I kept the pair that I had because they were so cool. They were so nice. The sole was huge. Honestly, I would have only kept them as like a fashion artifact just to like have and be like, oh, remember that time when these shoes were like it. That's the first item. The next item um, are two Celine items. Again, while I was at Nordstrom, all these purchases happened while I was at Nordstrom. So at Nordstrom, they had this thing. So Celine was a concession, which means it was a leased boutique within the department store. Celine doesn't go on sale. Well, at least they didn't. So they kept all of their bags from past seasons and then they would do an employee sale because they didn't want to sell these styles currently to like clients because then it would sort of devalue the brand and devalue the um, current season. So what they would do is they would hoard all of this stock and then do an employee sale. You would go into this room, it was like very first come first serve and there would just be bags and everything was 80% off. 80% off a Celine bag is still a lot of money. I purchased two bags. It was an insane like situation. You walk in, no photos, you have 15 minutes to decide if you want something and you have to buy it right then. So I like walk in, it was the third day of the sale but there was still like a decent amount of stock. With these things they don't like really tell anybody. It's just like, you have to like hear about it. They like sort of lock it down and you hear about it and then like that's it. I had heard about it a little late. The two bags that I found were really nice. They were not like the original bags that I had wanted from Celine. Like I really wanted the Nano luggage or the classic box bag. Couldn't find them. I came across this one, which is this snakeskin 
I don't know what the bag is called. They discontinued it, but it was so cute. I loved it so much. Like the original price on it was something insane, like $7,000 because it was snakeskin. Like it was beautiful. I think I paid like $1,200 or like $1,100 or something. It was so cute. Like the inside was leather. It was gorgeous, honey, like gorgeous. I like kind of didn't like that it was snakeskin because snakeskin is like really hard to take care of. Like the, I don't like how the scales can like lift up. I don't know. It was just like, it gave me like a weird feeling. Every time I would touch it, I'd be like, ooh, like, ooh. it's like a snake. And I was like, oh, but it was gorgeous, gorgeous. But the reason why I sold it was not because I didn't like it. It was because I couldn't fit a damn thing in it. I could fit my wallet and I could fit my keys. I couldn't even fit my phone or my sunglasses. So I was like, okay, like this bag is beautiful, but if I wear it, like I'll just put my wallet in it, but then I have to like hold everything else. Like, what's the point? If it was like the medium size, then I probably would have kept it because then I could fit my phone in it. Like I hated walking around, like holding my phone. I was like, why am I even having this bag with me if I have to hold everything else? So then I sold it for that. The other bag I bought was originally for my mom for her birthday. So it was this like gorgeous burgundy color, um, tote bag sort of like the Neverfull like Celine's version of the Neverfull the inside was fully suede It was so beautiful. It was so soft, but when I showed it to her, she was like, I don't want that. So I was like <laughs> Awkward like what am I gonna do with this bag now? And it was like $500 but the original price was like two grand. So I was like You know what? I'll just keep it. So I remember it was like summer semester I had this like archaeology class and I really thought I was like the shit so I walk in with this like Celine tote thinking I'm like so hot and just like holding my bags and everything and it was like a good tote but the thing is it was like it's like a wide tote like a horizontal tote and i prefer vertical totes just because i like to stack everything in as opposed to like laying everything down and i was like this bag just doesn't work for my lifestyle so then i go to this website um lxr and co they're a canadian brand i believe they're in Saks. Well, I know they're in the Bay, but I also think they're in Saks or like Neiman Marcus, some shit like that. They sell vintage um, and used bags, but you can also sell your bags to them. So I was like, okay, let me check them out. And then let me also check out Fashion File. So I approached these two vendors and I'm like, what will you give me for both of these bags? The one thing that sold me on LXR and Co as opposed to Fashion File was that they A, paid for shipping. So I didn't have to pay anything to get my bags to them and they did direct deposit into my bank account. Whereas Fashion File, you have to pay for shipping to the States, which I was like, I'm not gonna do. And then if your bag is deemed inauthentic, you have to pay to ship it back. And I was like, I'm not gonna like lose money potentially like dealing with these people. So then I was like, let me just send it to Montreal where LXR and Co is based and they pay for everything. And I'm like, my hands are clean. And anything, they gave me a better deal. So I think I purchased the bags in total for $1,300 and I ended up reselling the bags for a total of $1,600. So I was like, bitch. like I made money. So I like made $300 in profit from selling these bags. Um, my original goal in buying these bags was not to resell them because I like genuinely thought I was like, I love them. But then once I started using them and like I realized I couldn't like do anything with them and I sort of bought them and I was like in the moment, I was like, my eyes glazed over I was like in the fashion realm so not thinking clearly very impulsive but um, so I bought them and then I was like fuck it I'm gonna sell it so I made money anyway so like that was like a, a good little thing and then it turns out afterwards I was like I want to do this again like I want to buy things and then sell them again but they stopped doing the sale and the next item are two belts so when I first started getting into luxury I was really unsure where to start. So as I mentioned, I started with a card case and then my next item was this Gucci belt. So this was summer 2017. Gucci was really popping off. Like everybody loved their stuff. Everyone was like, oh my God, Gucci is the brand. Buy their things, you're cool. I remember I was like working at the Bay and I was like, ooh, what should I do? So then I go to hold Renfrew and I'm like looking around. I go to the Gucci concession and I see this belt. It was like the basic bitch belt, like giant, gaudy silver GG logo with green and red webbing and then like black leather like <sighs> boring like it was nice 
it was nice but honestly i bought it in a size that was way too small i bought it in a size 78 which is the eight inch waist i think and i was like i must have been the skinniest legend for that summer like who did i think i was and then i tried to wear it like last year and i was like oh, i can't fit it so then I was like, Jesus, okay, I have to sell it. So then I tried to sell it for like legitimately two years because I was like, this is not me. Like I am not this giant logo person where I'm just like, look at my belt. Like, no, that is not me. I'm very subtle, which is why I like Prada now. And Celine for that matter, they're very like low key. So I was just like, I need to get rid of this belt. But the problem is I bought it in such a small size. Like who the hell is it gonna fit? And I had destroyed that belt. Like when I first got it, I wore it every single day. I wore it clubbing to the mall. I wore it to work, go for drinks and go to restaurants. I literally wore it to do everything. I wore it to take out the trash. Like I don't even care. I wore it. I loved it. It looked like it was well loved. Like it looked old and haggard, but I was like, I still need to like sell it. Like I'm not just gonna keep it for like the sake of keeping it. So I ended up like going to Facebook Marketplace and selling it for such a low number. I remember like listing it for like 150 and then I ended up accepting like 120 because I was just like, get this thing away from me. Like I want it gone, like bye. I'm definitely not even a belt person anymore. Like who was I? Who was I? I think this was when I was at Nordstrom and I had to wear dress pants. So I had to like wear a belt like obviously you have to like tuck things into dress pants you can't just wear things out of dress pants and then you have to wear a belt to like cinch it all together plus i worked in men's accessories and like you definitely need a belt so like that was that and then the next item was this louis vuitton belt and it was so nice it was reversible black on one side silver buckle with the monogram on the other side and this belt was insanely expensive i remember i was with my mom we were shopping around we went to the louis vuitton store because she wanted a belt and then I was like, I want a belt. So then I bought this belt and it was like $750. And I was like, <sighs> but I did it. Honestly, I really thought I was loaded. Like who the hell did I think I was? And I was just like walking around with this belt. I thought it was the hot shit. And I only ever wore it on the black side. Like I could have just bought the single sided black belt which was like 450 or something but no i wanted the versatility i wanted to have the option to wear the monogram side and i was just like again i'm not this like logo person like i didn't even like it and the buckles on louis vuitton belts let me tell you shit they get scratched like nothing else you like literally just hold it and it already has a scratch i'm like it looks terrible so then i like got i smartened up i bought the size more so then it could fit like more people and like I could wear it more but I was just like I don't even like wearing it it's so gaudy like every time you wear it it's just like look at me and look at my Louis Vuitton belt I was like Ugh, I hate those people so then I was like I can't be that person anymore so then I sold it and I sold it for $300 like I took such a loss on it but like that is the good thing about luxury is that you can sell it and still make some money back it's true you will lose money but like you can get some cash back in most senses and sometimes even more. With that one, I was like, okay, no more belts, no belts, no logos. You are not that person. Like stop trying to convince yourself that you're that person. Like you're not, so stop. With all of these lessons, very expensive lessons I might add, don't buy something just cause everybody else is buying something. And I know this is like, duh. But no, it's not dub. People get so influenced by influencers. Like that is their job. Influencers, that's why they're so big because they do such a good job at influencing people to buy things. They style it so well. You're like, oh my God, like I will be that stylish person if I buy them. And it's like, sweetie, no, you won't. Take a seat. I was like, don't buy these things because everybody else buys them because that's not really you. You're trying to be them. You're not trying to be yourself. So that's what I learned with the Balenciaga shoes and with the belts. With the Celine bags, it was like a little bit different. The lesson that I learned is don't get crazy. I mean, that one, it kind of worked out for the best because I did make $300, but if I didn't, then it would be like, take a seat, take a breath. They're just bags. Your financial security is better than buying all these bags that you don't need. And I was like, okay, 
I definitely don't do that crazy sort of shopping now. I definitely think a lot more about my purchases. Try not to get swayed by sales, like pushy salespeople, because I was a salesperson, so like I know the tricks. But I do often find myself like having to don't do it. Like so I'll be like, oh, maybe I should. And I'm like, don't do it. I've definitely smartened up. Um, I don't really shop as much anymore. I go in with like specific items for specific needs. That's it. I'm trying to buy classic items now as opposed to more seasonal items. Um, seasonal items are very fun and trendy items are fun. But when they have such an insane price tag attached to them, I've learned you're not going to wear it. Like you'll love it for a season and then like now it's in your closet and good luck trying to get rid of it because everybody else is over it too. Think about your purchases and like, I know it's like, oh, that should be so duh, but it's not. The amount of times like impulse purchases have really like gotten a hold of me more times than I would like to say. That is my video. Thank you for watching. If there are any purchases that you've made that you regret, let me know in the comments below and why. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks. Bye.